Hi Greedy 3D is if I've learnt anything in the Greedy 3D man cave over the years it's don't throw anything away, don't throw your failed prints away. I've got a box that is stashed with failed prints and occasionally when I get another failed print that's usually a massive one rather than throw it away I can sometimes repair it using parts from the old one. So let me show you what I mean. So here I've got an alien tail that I printed on my Saturn S and as you can see it's had a little bit of damage on the top of it there. So I don't really want to print the whole thing off again but look at the shape of that. That's, that's not going to be repairable but what I did have about a week ago was another failed part on an alien print and it just so happens that part of that failure there's a little segment that I think I can use again so I'm going to show you how I put this back together to save the print that I would have thrown in the bin or two prints I guess that I would have thrown in the bin just by using some real simple techniques stay tuned <music> So here's that bit of knobbly alien tail that I cut off the other failed print and I've just done a little bit of sculpting and bodging with a pair of cutters just to see how easy and quickly I can get this to fit in some kind of fashion that will mean that it looks like it was part of the print and I think that is how I'm going to put it in there and it seems to fit well it did take a little bit of nipping and a little bit of molding but it fitted reasonably well now You've got to accept that this is not going to look perfect, but you have to weigh up things. You have to weigh up the cost of failed prints against what you're happy with for repair. Now, for me, this is my model, so I'm quite happy with how this is going to look. But you may want perfection, and if you do, you're going to need to reprint things off yourselves. But when you look at that piece of section of resin there, there's probably about six quid's worth worth of resin there and um, you know if you want perfection you can print it off again but if you want to save yourself around about six quid this fix will do the treat for you now of course it all depends again on where your breakages are it all depends on what spares you've got how you can fix it if you can fix it but on on my sort of situation with this print here that is what i've got and i'm happy with that i've saved myself about six pounds worth of resin you will not notice that in the end result and uh, I am now going to use a little bit of a technique that I've shown you before, which is some resin and some talcum powder to make a kind of gloopy paste that you can fill any holes or gaps that you've got to save you using any fillers. And resin is great stuff because hey, you can harden it with a curing light and it will seal just like concrete. Now, the secret with this is to have a nice thick gloop. And uh, what I've done there is that's about a week old. And all I've done is I've covered it with a glove and I've kept it in a dark place so that I've come back to it now. Give it a little bit of a stir and it's ready to go again. And I'm going to use that to mould and kind of resin weld, if you will, around that piece that I've just put in to seal all the gaps. Now, what's important here is you don't want one thick layer. You need lots of thinner layers because there's always a risk if you put too much resin in, too thick a resin, that it's not going to set on the inside and it's going to end up running. So make sure you use thinner layers, but more of them. And use your ultraviolet light. Just solidify them. It only takes a couple of seconds just to give it um, a bit of a cure. We'll do a little bit more curing on which I'll talk about in a bit, but this will make your models um, sealed well. It will join those bigger gaps that you can't use the precision bottles in. And it saves you using the green stuff world or it saves you using Milliput. It's just another tool in your toolbox. And it's really, really simple with just resin, talcum powder and away you go. And that's what I'm going to be using now to fill that gap so that that alien tail, this is off the Wicked Alien Queen. And if you know the model, it is going to be huge, absolutely huge. And every piece, as far as I'm concerned, for, is cost per resin. So I don't want to throw anything away if I can help it. So a little bit more work was done on that. Little layers often. And uh, there we go. It is done and dusted. Now, just to make sure that it's had a full proper cure, I'm going to leave it under my curing lamp. And I left it under there for about 10 to 15 minutes just to give it that final solidification of uh, UV lights on there. And make sure you turn it around a few times so the light can get it. If you've got a curing station and you can fit this in, you can pop it in there, of course, and, and make it done. So, And that's it. 
that's how you use your failed models to do repairs on others. And as I said, it is not perfect by any long shot. But once that's all painted black, once I've done some highlighting on that, you really won't see that in the bigger picture. I've saved six quid. I am really, really happy. And I've used a piece that would have been absolutely obsolete. Again, a reason why you save all of your broken bits of resin. Hope you've enjoyed that today. Uh, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment, leave me your thoughts if you want to join the Greedy 3D Patreon. It is there, all the details are in the description. And I will see you next time on Greedy 3D.